when we are discussing attention right yes sir so how do you correlate spirit of the sword with the attention just to freak out with your imagination now you are almost clear the spirit of the samurai the person who is you no know, completely trained a mastered his art and they have understood what is the spirit of the sword in the context of the parable mm-hmm. and we are discussing attention mm-hmm. sword of attention mm-hmm. so what is uh, the spirit of the sword in the context of attention rather the sword of attention can i try don't ask it just to do it don't be so gentle yes. just try so uh, my idea or uh, interpretation is this i think the spirit of the sword indicates that the daring and uh, the see the wait wait when i say i suppose you are thinking by language do you see a sword ah uh, uh, yes i imagine it how does it look like did you go to some pictures of the swords so uh, now, not now, now why I... don't you why don't you describe the sword that you project in your mind okay describe, describe it hmm uh the sword has a long thin blade and is sharp on one side and blunt on the other it is tapering towards the blade to give it that sharpness and uh, has an elaborate handle which the bearer of the sword holds on to while using the sword mm. i see the sword as uh, having a silver or a steel blade silver colored blade and a golden gilded handle yeah All right. so so the spirit of the sword is no, 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 wait 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 let us see how everyone see the reference of the sword mm. just the word sword unlike mm. the spirit mm. it has a clear reference yes it can potentially object. have a clear reference yeah a very definable describable uh, and uh, what to call uh, uh, kind of a quality which can be conceptualized at a higher order mm. somewhat like nitya has done about her experience of seeing the bird nest which she has written so beautifully in the there over and uh, she has sent a copy also in the genesis or some group all right so that level of projection is included how do you see a, a sword yeah anybody else sir my imagination is like how the rays of sun get converged by a lens like that my whole attention focuses on to one point that is how the spirit of the sword works when yeah, it is attentive that's, that's okay but before that would you like to try describing the sword of your reference projection you know you have to take it very seriously i, th- I think we talked about projection some time back we did not continue every item was projected first nitya then only the craftsman made it yes most of the time they whatever they projected they would make it in the what you call uh, prototype you know that in, in wax or in wood or whatever pliable material and then they will put a mold and then they reproduce it so the cup 
the cup has its origination in the projection of a highly creative individual. And every cup is a manifestation of that individual's attempt to somehow translate that position into reality. So, there, nothing, do not take position for something grander. It's a great art. I told you, the film director projects the entire scenario. A dance teacher, a dance master in the film, she creates the dance much before. Because she cannot do practice in Kuala Lumpur and uh, then in Tar Desert and all that. She does it in the floor and then she can visualize. I mean, project. So, how do you project the sword? How do you see that sword? Because we have to next to talk about a sword having a spirit. Okay, don't do that now, but uh, how that uh, thing? It is. You have to see some of the videos on sword, samurai sword, you know, how they keep it, you know, they, they, they finally rub it with a silk cloth, understand that? Silk, that's where they treat their sword. All right, okay. Okay, all right. So, uh, Nitya conceptualized the spirit of the sword as the sun rays being, uh, what do you call, converging onto it, right? And yes. becoming uh, the property of that sword. All right, okay. Anybody mm -hmm. else? Ah, by the way, oh, now let's go back to Minashi. What is the spirit of the sword? How do you conceptualize the spirit of the sword? Yeah, so uh, uh, my conceptualization of the spirit is in the daring of the sword, ready to meet any challenge and any opponent. Daring is a human concept. You have to talk from the perspective of the sword. It's, it's ready. Sword, what is a sword? It does not have any of the human attributes. Okay. So you have to use some attributes in the nature process, like uh, someone like Nitya did. Mm. So daring, courage, confidence, and all are um, human mental variables. Mm -hmm. Sword is a metal, sorry, a material, an object, an entity, absolutely mm -hmm. far, far away from anything of the human properties. True. So, how would you describe, how would you talk about it, how it has a spirit, or, yeah. It's capacity for challenge? No, no, no challenge. That word also is not applicable. It's capacity to do its task in a perfect manner. Can I try one this once yeah. again? Yeah. So the sword is the person herself, and the spirit is what drives him or her. Hmm, that what are you doing now? That also you say. In that statement, what have you done? Um, it is a projection I have. No, no, no. You are taking the sword, at, uh, attributing sword to some kind of a, what you call anthropomorphic character, I mean, human qualities. Mm -hmm. So you use the word mm -hmm. his, her, and uh, like in a sort. Okay, all right. That also possible. Now, anybody else? But uh, do you comprehend in your internal screen something that can be called the spirit of the sword? You may not be able to talk about it. That's a different issue. But are you able to internet? Are you, are you able to have a mental impression, whether you talk it out or not? 
Are you sure about the mental impression, about the possibility of a, of a so-called spirit? What is spirit? Spirit means energy, energy. Mm. An energy field is called a spirit. Spirit also means fire. So you don't have to attribute any other uh, uh, complex meanings to the word spirit because that English word has different meaning and it can always depend upon the definite basic meanings. So spirit means fire. Okay. Spirit means an energy field. So can you think about uh, uh, that kind of a spirit for a sword? Or rather, forget about that. Rather, why the Master Samurai said this to him? What the Master Samurai conveyed by that single dialogue to an old cook, I mean, a great cook, he was a great cook, he was a great human being by now, no doubt about that. By the way, you know, you listen carefully to your own inner process. I think you are all very clear what he conveyed, I suppose, right? But uh, you are not able to slice out, what you call slice out. You are not able to specifically pinpoint what the master meant. Mm. Or what could be the so-called spirit of the sword. So almost like a cord, K-O-N. It is very, very, very extremely poetic. Like a, like the symbol poem, Penne Nin Kavilil Kandu Matur Tamarakad. Because Tamarakad is totally different. But it conveys. So similarly, what is the spirit in the sword? How does a sword achieve a spirit? Can you think of some situation where a sword achieves a spirit? In the hands of a samurai. Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, I had a doubt. Yeah, doubt us, please. In the parable of the woodcutter, hmm. does his axe have a spirit? Because the final cut was done by the... No, that's a very beautiful language, thinking Mandra Rishya. Of course, that I have been waiting. I thought maybe, actually I thought Asadi might be talking about that. You, are, you have to have what you call linkage thinking that will be coming later. Because all knowledges in the world, which we are all very comfortably mugged up or rotland from the environment, and we reproduce it and feel good about us, they are all linkages. I don't know whether you know uh, that great artists, they have great preference for their equipment. They will not even allow somebody else to touch their flute or guitar or uh, whatever. And there are artists who will just come home and ask the wife, who touched my guitar today? Just a touching, no, forget about playing. They can feel it. It means it is not necessarily the quality only of the person. By constant use, like Nitya said, by constant, you know, constant feeling with it, constant using with it, it it almost gets the spirit. I know I have myself and my jeep have a spiritual relationship. Actually, it has done wonders on its own when I made a little bit of nonsense with the driving. In this contest, really, sometime back we said, you know, the jeep, the pencil, the, all of them have a life, which, which is a fact by particle physics. When you understand the spirit of the sword, you will understand the spirit of the glass, the plate, the everything. And uh, you should have that penetrating projection to feel the spirit of everything that you behave with. 
then it gets it. In fact, in warfare and all that, people prefer a certain sword. They say, I want that sword. In fact, I believed in the spirit of my fountain pen, my pen. Even now I have it. I wrote all the examination with that pen only. So I just cannot leave it. So I, I had, it is all person. Do not think very rationally. Minash is very rational, Minash. You have to get out of your rationality. You had that habit. You In between, you went into much imagination. You used to write poetry and things like that. But in the last two, three, four months, uh, because of the various activities in connection with uh, taking care of the household affairs, you have become much more rational. You have to get it back. But now, how, now, somehow you have to negotiate your perception, your power of attention, uh, in this case, to really uh, trust, really see the possibility of so-called spirit or life in material objects. Not necessarily with every one of them, but you know, you, I don't know whether you have any such possessions. You know, what is a sword to a samurai? How does he treat it? How does he look at it? So said, what is a sword for a samurai? If you understand that relationship, do you have anything equivalent to that? You may have a lot of human beings, very important. Especially the modern generation. <coughs> so they have seen a whole lot of things and they take everything for granted. So is there a single thing which you treat with? with great feeling. In the past, I used to, as a, as a poet, as a creative writer, I mean, story writer and all that, I have been to many homes and villages and all that, where I could see innocent, beautiful girls, and they would show me their great possessions. So what a wonderful feeling it was for me to see them. They would go, because at that time there was no electricity in most of the homes. They would go inside their dark rooms, cow dung smeared, cow dung smeared rooms. And in a small hole in the wall, there would be so many little, little chips, chip caskets. And there would be broken pieces of black, red, green bangles. Oh, what a beauty it was. Because they can go to the festival maybe once in a year, sometimes only once in two years. Because the temple is far away, they need uh, uh, the entire family only can go because they have to walk for about a day to reach the temple and they have to stay there and they carry their what you call mat and they go there and they sleep in the temple ground and come back. So mostly some of them would go to a temple festival only once in two, two years. A small dabba, a small dappy of uh, uh, old, uh, what you call surma, kanmashi, you know, <laughs> some little, little beads. Oh, what a, it, to see that, you know, it is so, and to see their expressions on the face and showing it to me, oh, my, this all absolutely in the way, wonderfully. Uh, Sad. That's what I call wonderful sadness. Even now I feel kind of a drop of tears in my eyes when I remember those moments. Everything was precious. Everything was scarce. That's all logical analysis. They allowed it not because uh, it was scarce and all that, 
that was uh, once upon once in a while you know piece of uh, some bangles which their their grandmother or their mother saved it for a year and out of which they gave her some 50 ana you know ana i mean 50 paisa something like that and they would be going and uh, visiting all the so called stars in the temple and negotiate with the president by some three green walas and uh, three red bangles and that time all of them were glass that is the beauty of life unless you understand the spirit of the things you just cannot feel the beauty of life of course then the spirit of the little rose flower rose flower rose flower in your garden or little jasmine in your courtyard or the little little trees in your courtyard little mango tree or little whatever in your little courtyard because by the time you are able to see the spirit of that mango tree or a small rose plant in your whatever courtyard or whatever you become that much evolved or you have become that much evolved that's why you are able to feel understand that that much your attention the power of attention it is it is derived by the what you call if attention is a kind of a sword it is the spirit of that sword of attention which gives you that feeling it was the attention of that little girl in her what you call petticoat you know the kind of a white at that time this attention she would not allow anybody to touch it it is the attention that creates that wonder about that broken pieces of glass bangles and the modern people i think you know they are all uh, unfortunately because a lot of thing can be purchased and thrown away you know, they are all available in the market you no know? that western meaningless culture western baseless superfluous culture and the east and the indians are now looking for meaning where is the meaning with the people loving people they cannot get it they don't get the fullness of feeling i'm telling the young generation they don't get the fullness of feeling one with the husband or with the wife or with the daughter or with the son or with the brother or with the sister or with the house then what so there's a terrible emptiness a terrible nothing wrong about that people are managing with it no problem we are talking about uh, you know the potentiality the speeds of the engines the greatness of the human being we are representing that for ordinary mind it's all okay that you have to always remember Alright. If the sword can have that spirit, and if attention is operating almost like a sword, or sword is the metaphor we are using to uh, to to feel the waves of attention, like a parable, like you are using a parable to understand certain things, here. Uh, uh so it is a parable so it is the case study so it is the metaphor to understand uh, the ways of attention 
Of course, attraction is not at all like the sword. The sword is a material, it is so called iron. Okay. But we are talking about the way a great superior, super genius samurai keeps his sword and how he relates with that sword and how he understands the spirit of that sword. Similarly, you have to, for the first time in your life, instead of being an automatic victim of having attention inside and use that word once in a while, for the first time you have to sit back and reflect upon what is this thing, what is this, what called, like the other day, Meena, she was telling that she was trying to understand the process of attention, okay. So what is that so-called process? What is that? Or is it there something called attention at all? Because people say, philosophers say, psychologists say uh, something and uh, uh, when somebody looks at something, people say, okay, look at it with more attention. Or the teachers say, say are your attention please? Or an announcement comes, your attention please? So when that uh, command comes to the loudspeaker or from the teacher, what does the students do? Are they doing something? There is apparently some doing, but what is that doing? Because this is to be understood very thoroughly because, as I told you the other day, without the sharpened tool of attention, uh, many of the higher order orbits of the human entity just cannot be accessed. All learning happens by attention only. <coughs> All development happens out of attention. <coughs> As I told you the other day, attention is a constant background, a constant uh, vehicle in which all other variation of activities are performed, whether it is reading or writing or talking where it is reading great uh, uh, subjects or talking great ideas, whether in, in singing or learning to sing or whether playing a musical instrument or learning to play musical instruments, where everywhere attention is the common factor. And those who you wonder about uh, so-called high performance, they are all knowingly or unknowingly. Coincidentally or by the sheer kind of experiences they had in their developmental times, they have all become sort of masters of their attention, maybe without awareness. It is somewhat like that old, um, uh, sorry old, that uh, even described, what you call Dronacharya or somebody asked, uh, what you call, I don't know the details, uh, it was a task of shooting an arrow to a, to a bird kept in the distance on a tree. Some of you may know that story. So, Dronajari asked somebody, what do you see? So, someone said, I see the bird and the sky. Oh, sky, tree, bird and all that. Somebody else asked, and he said, I see the bird. And then Arjuna, I suppose, asked, he said, I see only the eye of the bird. The sword, uh, like Nitya or everybody pointed out, it gets its uh, momentum, it gets its life of movement by, by it's uh, attached to the moving human body or human hand. But attention, the sword of attention being an integral part of the dynamic process of the human organism, uh, it can have its own independent uh, performance, independent activity. That is what I want you to discover next. 
whatever i did it is by that only it is uh, 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 it is not my any conscious effort of learning or anything when i look at something i just know it that's so and i know it is nothing but the work of whatever we call attention in fact there is even a theory one of the theories about the construction of pyramids in egypt you know even now the entire world of technology just cannot make any concluding uh, uh, statements about how that was constructed such a long time back the base stones are something like 8000 tons or whatever and uh, uh, whatever how that was so accurately shaped and how they were all lifted into that height one of the theories is that it was lifted into that height by what aliens this is uh, uh, <laughs> by the by minasi do you think i will give this example if aliens were the agencies that built the pyramid what is the, what is the context of my talking about pyramid if aliens constructed it if one of the theories which i said is about aliens constructed it why should i say that what is the linkage of that in the given context it was considered to be some unknown spirit that did it that and i am not asking about theories about this. no 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 i am not asking about what all theories you know you have to say in this context you have to complete the sentence one of the theories also talk about how that pyramid stones were lifted so high is by the power of attention of course by the power of attention you know see this is uh, uh, the uh, next time i am also telling you you have to see the context of energy i, I was still last sentence i was talking about the power of attention i talked about to me that i get everything by the power of attention and i said something and then i said in fact there is there are so i said i remember somewhat there are so many theories about the construction of pyramid and one of the theories talk about uh, that the, the heavy stones were raised to that height by what then you are talking aliens and all that alien there is no context of my talking it is obviously in connection with attention because that's what i am discussing no your knowledge is a kind of a block for you vinashi how do central most i would say the fulcrum of patanjali yoga sutra is just a four or five sentences in page number it is not mentioned here okay in the english translation of patanjali yoga sutra by alistair sure but patanjali just does not talk about attention alone the sanskrit term he used for attention is sanyama s a n y a m a can you see that can you read it uh, the purpose uh, right now is to make you informed about uh, the re- possible range of uh, concepts and ideas and topics which you may have to master when you want to become a mentor or a trainer or a, or a guide for the world i mean world of people who come to you so 
So samyama, a said yam in English script. So that's the word he has used for attention. So samyama is not normal attention. It is what we can call reflective focusing of attention. How do you do that? What is reflection? You sit down sometime to reflect upon. These are all words you quickly cover. These are all basically as I told you at this dimension of our flying, words are useless. You have to, but you have to use the word to get into the possible sharpness of the nature of the referent. Like I asked you, what is reflection? What the metaphor you can use? The mirror, for example, okay? Reflect. The mirror reflects. Okay. When the mirror reflects, who is seeing the reflection? Come on, Anuradha. When the mirror is reflecting, who is seeing that reflection? The person who is seeing the mirror. Okay, okay, all right. And what is he seeing? What is he? What is he seeing? Depends on where he is standing. No, do not go to that level. I am <laughs> very simple. Now. What is he seeing is his own reflection. Okay. Do you see a, a slight uh, person there? You look at the mirror and you get the reflection of the you. See? Mm -hmm. In order for you to know you, let us say the physical you, you need that reflection. Let us say the reflector inside. Uh, no, let us look at the reflection first outside. And that reflection is reflecting the you only. Okay. Do you see something very interesting there? Hmm. If you see your own reflection, why do you use why do you see your reflection at all? You see? But it is required also. When you see your reflection, what is happening inside? A reconfirming of what you really is. Okay. Right? The same thing. The thing is yeah. the same. But there is something very, very different about the same thing. All right? The same thing becomes more and more clear. For example, today in the Genius Service WhatsApp site, uh, Navin had written that uh, what all Nitya had written about her experience of observing the bird. He had to read it two, three times. Beautiful. Actually, that has to read, that has to be read two, three times. Then only it will be open with our attention. Then only it can be dissected and seen the beauty of it. So what happened when you what happens when you read the same paragraph to let us say like Buddha said three times? Buddha used to say that significant actions or concepts or ideas should be told three times. And Buddha used to do that all the time. 
So what happens? The same idea, you hear it the first time, the second time, the third time. You don't try to answer it, just, uh, just uh, meditate on that. Just keep that, just incubate on that. Uh, if you have a point of wonder there, just incubate on that, that's enough. Because the purpose is not to arrive at an essay on what you are reflecting upon, but to get a feel of what you are reflecting upon. So, that reflect your attention on something. So, something is looked at, it is seen, or it is heard, or it is sensed, or it is felt. And who is the reflecting person aspect? What is the reflector there? What is the mirror there? Just keep on wondering. Now that's about attention. Now look at uh, when we talked about the power of attention, perhaps uh, you were all just listening. But look at the look at the possibilities that can be achieved by the power of attention and attention alone. See, sanyama, that means reflect your attention on the transformation or variation of quality of something, the form of something, and the state of something brings knowledge of the past and future. You are, see, very interesting. You are focusing your sanyamic attention on the quality as well as the form and as well as the state of certain thing. But it brings knowledge of the past and the future. Just like that, if something is opened, cut opened. Like the Gordian knot is cut opened. No, second. This is all just a reading, just language. Some make me attention on the form, a form of form of the body. Makes it imperceptible. What is that? Let's just imagine. And I don't want you to do all these things. But uh, understand this, you don't understand the power of attention, which the entire world is not bothered about. It is automatically happening there. They don't look at attention as a, as a powerful separate entity within everyone. They just to take it for granted. The whole day say, I don't think in normal dialogue outside in the normal conversation, nobody talks about attention. Like you are in a group discussion, I don't think somebody is uh, aware. Attention here, please. I don't think anybody say that. Maybe in a board meeting or a, a discussion meeting in a company, maybe the group later may say, okay, please, everybody is chatting and looking into the what you call uh, phone and all that. Then the group leader may go, hello, 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 your attention, please. Now let us discuss. That's all. Or it is a commonly heard word in the airports or the railway station. Your kind attention, please. That itself is wrong. What is kind attention? Where else do you hear the word attention? But mind you, my dear friends, that is the central most operating power of not only the human being, but of every living entity in this Known universe. And as usual, that most important thing is the most to take it for granted, naturally. Like sexuality is the most beautiful experience, and that is the most corrupted and uh, uh, what you call the most raved phenomenon. 
So that's a tragedy and a paradox of the ridiculous, uh, arrogant humanity. That's a different issue. Okay, look at it. Reflect your attention on the form of your body, you will become imperceptible. That means nobody will be able to see you. What is that? Is it, uh, is it acceptable to any logic of the modern, ridiculous, educated, logical, rational human beings at all? So you into your own mind. You have to, that's what I told you, mentors. You have to really get out of so many notions and norms within your own mind. Don't feel worried about that. Do it. Okay, some you want the sun. Generate the knowledge of the various realms of the universe and uh, the saving on the moon, knowledge of the arrangement of stars will be understood. That is how the so called Vakbada and uh, what you call Varaha Mahira and all could write this wonderfully accurate treatise on astrology and astronomy. The stupid Indians and India government is never talking and projecting about that. And the Western so-called scientists are conveniently turning a blind eye to that. They do not understand how Bhaskar and Vakbada and Varaha Mahira could accurately predict the movement of the stars without any radar, without any telescope, nothing. How Dhanandri and Charaga and Susrada and Sarmadara could identify the properties of the every, every root and the leaf and the seed and create various concoctions that can liberate the human beings from the tragedies of illness. How can anybody in the world do research on the millions of plants? They just talked to the plants. When they look at a the plant, they could feel what are its properties. I say this to inspire you to uh, make it a challenge because there's a lot of time for the mind and intellect even if you're working in an office because most of the activities are very routine. Like driving a car on the road, you can do most of the jobs in the office or in the home. And uh, as I told you, we are talking, I'm talking to a group of genius choice fellows. Like uh, Edmund Hillary said, if there is an Everest, why don't we climb? That's all. Nobody would feel even, uh, uh, even a distant, distant, distant trace of a feeling about why should they climb Everest. But someone is uh, just inspired. That's all. And that's the inspiration I hope uh, every one of you uh, has already or uh, uh, is capable of uh, defining within you. Reflect your focus on the naval center. Bring knowledge on the bodily systems. Again, if you look at uh, Sarangadara, there is a book called Sarangadara Samhita. Oh, I wonder how can the modern world of medicine cannot, can just like they disregard it. You know the exact number of the veins and the arteries are reported in that. Western medical science took uh, 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 identified the exact number of arteries and veins, maybe around 20 or 30 or whatever, 40, maximum 40 years back only. Then there are functions of the glands, the cells, the what to say, everything about the human body was clearly understood. Master, can you repeat and, the name and, of the and, book? And, what about the modern person? They don't understand even what happens in their body unless they are ill. Now, Samyama on the heart leads to awareness of the pure mind rather than the original mind. That means 
the mind here meaning that original consciousness the state of that awareness the state of your wakefulness as of it is there now how is it generated how is it maintained how that you is right now there what is that you in you what is that all this could be understood then mastery over the senses which uh, our asadi pointed out you no know? mastery over the senses now in the very book of adanjali subsequently he talks about uh, the eight powers that can be generated by uh, so after this after chewing in sanyami attention on all these aspects what is the next level that is all ridiculously incredible but how you might have heard about that you can make your body as small as that of an amoeba one two you can make your body as large as a mountain three you can make your body invisible four you can understand the languages of the birds and the plants and all that five you can enter into the body of another entity okay and so on and so forth and finally interplanetary travel mentioned something like 7000 years back definitely it's all possible because these are all possible in the universe because the universe i mean the planet earth is so powerful evidenced by the seeds growing into the trees and delivering the flowers science make it so cool there is no wonder in the formation of the flowers in the plants there is no wonder in the formation of the petals and the flowers and the colors and the designs and the smell there is no wonder about the very design of our own body it's all there so why should we bother it's all there just like uh, things are all there right? which are which are all taken for granted the body also is taken for granted so this is the power this is the spirit of the sword of attention